Welcome to creative problem solving and decision making. Whether you realize it or you don't, solving problems is a part of your job. Some years ago, my firm sent me on a consulting assignment to a chemical manufacturer. Now, this company, among many chemicals that it produced, it also produced fertilizer. The issue was that their customers, farmers, when they would receive a bag of fertilizer, they expected it to be in the form of tiny little balls. Uh, they call them prill in the industry. The purpose for the fertilizer to be produced in the form of these tiny little balls is that when the farmer throws the fertilizer onto the crops, they expect the fertilizer to roll off the leaves and go down to the roots where it belongs. Unfortunately, with this company's fertilizer, sometimes when the farmers would open up the bag, they would find, along with the tiny little balls, they would find some rock hard blocks of fertilizer as well. So it seems that while the fertilizer was being shipped, sometimes it would, sometimes the little balls of fertilizer would meld together and form these rocks that were of no use to the farmer. And this problem was bad enough that many farmers were beginning to switch to competitors. And the company was really frantically trying hard to solve this problem. So they put together a team that was brainstorming the, the reasons why this was happening and how they could solve it. They tried a few things. So for example, they tried to contact the dealers, dealers that would stock the product. They asked these dealers to keep moving the sacks of their fertilizer from time to time so that the, the fertilizer would not get the opportunity to coagulate. There were a few hundred dealers across the country and unfortunately it was very difficult to ensure that all of them were moving the sacks of their fertilizer regularly because I'm sure the dealers had many other important things to do so that failed. That solution failed. They tried another solution. They tried to put in an SOP, a standard operating procedure for the loaders. These are the, the laborers that would pick up the bags of fertilizer and then put them in a truck and then from the truck they would pick it up and put it on a shelf and eventually hand it over to a customer. They, they asked these laborers to follow a standard operating procedure. You must pick it up a certain way, you must throw it down with a certain force. Again, it didn't work because there were a few thousand laborers across the country that would handle this company's fertilizer. Expecting them all to follow an SOP every time they would pick up a sack of their fertilizer, this solution did not work. They were almost at the end of the year and if this problem was not solved by the next crop season, it was very likely that this company would lose a significant amount of money. Now, that's a problem. And it's not very different from the sort of problems that you would face in any work environment. Think about it. It could be that your customers are unhappy about a defect in your product, like the one that I just mentioned. It could also be that you're working on a big project and you've only been given a very small budget. It could be that your customers are late in paying you back and you want to speed up the payment process. That's a problem that you need to solve. It could be that you're trying to increase sales and are having difficulty doing that. That's a problem that needs to be solved. Uh, you Maybe you're trying to make the customer aware of a new product that they don't know about yet. Again, a problem that needs to be solved. These are some examples of problems and there are many others. I'm emphasizing this because you and I, we are knowledge workers. We live in a time where our ability to solve problems sets us apart from other people. There used to be a time, maybe a century or two ago, when people were paid on the, on the basis of their physical ability, how strong they were. The stronger one would make some extra money. And then there came a time when people were paid on the, on the basis of their ability to read and write. And perhaps that was what set them apart at that time. But today, what sets you and me apart is our ability to analyze a problem and make the right decision at the right time. We are knowledge workers, as I said, and we are paid on the basis of our ability to solve problems and make decisions. So back to the fertilizer team, they decided to solve the problem in a structured way. They broke the problem down into its pieces. They started asking themselves some questions about the problem. They said, for instance, what stages does the bag go through from the time it leaves the company to the time it ends up in the hands of the customer? And what happens to the bag during that time? They then brainstormed the reasons. 
What could be some reasons for the caking? Could it be humidity? Could it potentially be the, the bag not being sealed properly? Could it be the way the bag is placed immediately after it is produced? Could it be the temperature at which the fertilizer is being produced? Could it be the proportion of chemicals that is being put in to produce the fertilizer? And a host of other reasons. They brainstormed all of these possible reasons and then tried to figure out how some of them linked with each other. How were they related to each other? What were the categories of reasons that led to caking in the bag? After identifying the more likely reasons, they tried to figure out possible solutions. What could be a way to solve this problem? And once again, they came up with a list. And then they took that list and filtered it further. Which among those solutions is more feasible, more suitable, more acceptable, more practical? And once they had identified a likely solution, they asked themselves, have we considered everything with regards to this solution? Is there any way this solution could go wrong and produce unintended consequences? Are there any risks that we need to be mindful of? And finally, when they had mitigated the risks, they laid out a plan for themselves to solve the problem. Breaking the solution down into its individual small steps so that eventually the implementation would become easier. That's how this team solved it. And they did manage to solve the problem. And that company, by the way, is still doing very well. But what about you? How good is your ability to solve problems? How structured is your way of thinking? How do you attack issues of this nature? Do you have a step-by-step -step way of solving problems? We'll be sharing many tools and techniques with you for problem solving and decision making in future videos. Stay tuned and make sure you subscribe.